In this video, I'm going to take you through a property that we just purchased to fix it up and resell it. I'm going to go over all the numbers, what we're paying for, what we pay for, what is worth, what is going to be the reno, how we financed it. I'm going to show you how we found this deal. We're going to go to my back office. You're going to see how these leads come into us. And the key thing is the financing. I bought this one using my IRA. So make sure you pay close attention because I don't deal with the world of going to the banks and turning in credit report and tax returns and bank statements and applications and appraisals and all that stuff. And the reason I do these videos is because I want to make sure that I'm committed to helping you buy real estate without having to deal with all that stuff that I just mentioned too. So come along for the ride, get your pen out because we're going to do a lot covering this video because I want you to get out there and get, get your next house too. All right, let's roll. Okay, class, it's Chris Haskins with TheRealEstateRoundup.com. My mission, my ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. So we're going to go through a property today so you can understand. I know it might be taking some time to peel back the layers, all the craziness, even my daughters. They're being taught this stuff through the media about having to go to the bank and have conventional, traditional financing in order for them to do real estate. And they live with me. I'm like, Damn, how is this getting into my daughter's minds? I don't want you to have to worry about that if you don't choose to. Not to say that it's a bad idea to use banks, but in order for you to buy multiple properties throughout the year, you're gonna have some other ways to do this business. You gotta learn some strategies. And my mentor told me, Chris, nowadays, Every six months, you're going to have to learn a new strategy if you want to stay in business. And I firmly believe it. So I bought this one using my self-directed Roth IRA. We're going, to, we're going to get into that in a minute. But I'm going to take you to the property. But let's, let, before we go to the house, it's a townhouse, I want to show you how do these leads look when they come into our system. Okay. So I um, took a screenshot of my computer screen here. So we've got a website. We're driving traffic. This is an internet lead. We're driving traffic to our website using social media optimization, right? And it's not cheap. It costs several thousand dollars a month. And we have paper leads. These are the two ways that I highly recommend for you to get leads. So if you have no way of finding people are like, how do I find these deals? How do I find these deals? I'm giving you my, my, my team in the video description below. If you just go right below to show you how you can get leads from the company that we use. All right. So I firmly believe that nowadays, if you can find a spouse online, you can find a house online. All right. So the lead comes into my system. Either we bought it or went to went they went to our website. Either way, we're paying to have the we're paying to have the traffic ran to a site that either we're getting the leads or we control the website. So you see the person puts their name in, their email address in, their phone number. And let's get the property information. They're filling this out right on the internet. So I know this stuff before we get before we talk to them. Does it have a basement? No. You see in the Hampton Roads in the Virginia Beach area, the water table is so high there are no basements. And if it is, it floods. How long have you owned the property? 24 years. What's the condition of the property? She says poor. Uh, what kind of repairs and maintenance does it need? Plumbing, flooring, windows. It needs a roof too, I believe. Is there anyone in the, in the property? Yes, tenant. Somebody lives in there. Is the house currently listed with a realtor? No. Do you need to sell your house fast? Yes, they're ready to go. Um, what is your ultimate goal with your house? To sell it within the next two to three months. So this is what we consider. You see, in real estate, it's nothing but a numbers game. Okay. So let's say you got level of motivation one or one through 10. One is somebody that's just thinking about selling. Nah, I just want to know what you're going to offer me. I'm calling you. What, what, what can you offer me? Those type of calls, I don't even want to be on, right? I don't even need to deal with that because I know if you don't have to sell, we're not the people you're looking for. You see, this business gets a lot easier when you do business with people that are looking for you, okay? I know a lot of you might be looking at leads, leads and deals, and you're like, man, I just can't get a deal. That's because you're dealing with the wrong people. You, you don't need to be dealing with people that just want to sell. We work with people that need to sell now, right? So that the, the want to sellers are one through sixes. I want to be dealing with sevens through tens, all right? One through sixes, I don't really have a lot of time. Sevens through tens, we need to take some action today, 
All right, so from this information here, based on what you saw, this is a seven through a 10, needs a lot of work. She says it's in poor condition. She's owned it for 20 something years. It's tenant occupied, so she's not emotional to it. So those are the leads that we're looking for, but we had to go through 12 to 13 to 14 to get to these type of leads. This is why I believe you're here because I'm giving you the information exactly how we do it. All right, so you can do it yourself. So you saw the lead, and when we come back, we'll go over the numbers and I'll talk to you a little bit about how we finance this thing, all right? So let's go to the property together. All right, so we're pulling up at the property here. I want you to notice this neighborhood. Give them a pan, Morgan, what we got right here. We're right next to, Turn left onto Old Clubhouse Road. right next to a little, we're right next to a little grocery store, which is an arrow up. Anytime you get property that's close to somewhere where people can go shopping, it makes the value go up. I need to cut this mess off. All right, that's our subject property there. What we'll do is I'll let you see the neighborhood. Uh, we're in Virginia Beach. So this is like a, this is a townhouse association, but it, they don't have any HOA fees here. So you can see. People don't necessarily take great care of their properties. And you can see we got cars sitting here, abandoned cars. Oh Lord, look at this right here. What in the world, they got a some type of car work thing going on in the back there. So that is an arrow down. See, the problem with buying townhouses that don't have HOAs is there's nobody to enforce. Oh my goodness, what we got here? We got a RV chilling in the back of the RV, good lord. There's no HOA to enforce how people take care of the property. So that is an arrow down. So we got arrow up location. We're in Virginia Beach. Arrow up location with the grocery store, but arrow down with no HOA. So let's pull in here. You can take a look, Morgan. So even in the immediate parking lot, you can see we have some old cars here. Looks like, I don't know. Let's pull up and see what we get. We can keep rolling. Oh, darn. What in the world is a stupid car? Let's see what we get. You can keep it rolling, buddy. You know, I want to apologize for my daughter just now. I don't know what that was. It actually was not part of the training, not part of this video. I, I, I don't know why they do the things that they do, the kids, but that's just what kids are going to do, okay? So, you know what? Being that there's no HOA, I don't even know who is in charge of cutting the grass here. So it's probably going to be me, since nobody else is probably gonna do it. So let's look around here. This is our local, this is our neighborhood. So we can see we've got one car over there that's been sitting on some stilts or whatever you call it. I don't know how long it's been there. And then we've got a few places with some old roofs down there. So there's nobody to call to enforce people to make them keep their property in good condition. It's just how it is when there's no HOA. So here's a subject property, it's going, to need, it's going to need a roof. Looks like these windows are ugly. They're going to have to redo those also. Let's go inside, I haven't been in, oh. I haven't even been inside since we bought it the other day. So they left us the keys. Miss Angie's is a beautiful, sweet lady that we got this house from. Is there any bugs in here? Are there bugs in here? I didn't see any when we came last time. Did you come with me last time? No. I gotta thank my daughter, my beautiful daughter for working with us today. I'm supposed to say you're welcome. Oh, you're welcome. They can't even hear me. You say you ain't want a microphone. Exactly. No. Okay. This is not taking short. All right. Let's do this. Ooh, that smells. All right, as you walk in, we've got a little hallway here. Oh, my goodness. So this, they left a ton of stuff for Daddy to clean up. Huh? So make sure you squeeze out to seven or point seven, okay? I don't remember all this stuff being in here, but it's my responsibility 
to clean it all up. This is what you got to deal with when you deal with real estate. Now, I'm thankful to do it. Oh, we got a tripod. More you want a tripod? Yeah. There you go. Um, Take it with you. <coughs> Stinks in here, doesn't it? Let's take a look out the back, see what we got here. I don't even think I even came out here. Oh, I got a free ladder too. That's cool. That's well, not bad. I didn't even go in here, man. I don't even know what's in here. Yeah, we'll look in there later. I don't know. We got a free toilet that won't work. So the backyard. Why is the central heating in here? Okay, looks like it's in good shape. So we got our arrow up here. Central heating in there is in good condition. But a lot of this stuff, rotten wood. You see what happens with houses, you have to notice. When you don't have an overhang there, I'll show you. I'll, I'll uh, take a picture of an overhang and I'll show you what it looks like. But you want to have some type of overhang on your property so the water doesn't fall directly down. Because when the water falls directly down, this is what happens. It goes behind and, and it destroys the wood. All right, I've seen that a hundred times at houses. You can leave the door open, Morgan. Get some air in here. Air up in here. Ew, what's that? So this kitchen here, y'all, round up. We will have to. We're gonna delete this entire kitchen because I can sense. I can. I can feel the moisture in the air. Can you feel it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's humid in here, yeah. So this, Ooh, don't open that one. I'm scared. Ain't nothing in there. It's gonna be cool. It's not just like I have trauma from all those other houses. You got trauma from the other houses that we. Ah, uh, that's a valid statement. I thought the power was on. So we got washing and dry. The water's on, but. Yeah, it's always on. Ooh! Come on in, buddy. So we got this bathroom we'll have to do. Something's leaking down here. We'll have to fix it. I don't know what. Open the toilet. Hmm? Open the toilet. The toilet shouldn't be that bad. Something's leaking here. We'll have to fix that. Something. Something going on. Hmm? You got the bathroom good? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So we've got a half bathroom. This is a three bedroom, two and a half bathroom. So here's our living room. What I'm thinking we might do, stand right there. We probably, I'm thinking, I'm not sure. We might just take this wall out and put a bar right here so you can sit down and look through both rooms. You think that would be nice, Morgan? So this is our living area. A lot of stuff we can throw away in this property. Did you want this clock, buddy? Yeah. It looks like from Uncle Stranger Things. Stranger Things? Big Ben? All right. So drywall. We got a little bit of drywall work. The paint's peeling off. There's a whole ton of stuff they left me up here. We got a lot of stuff to clean out. So this is what they're leaving with y'all. It's not too big of a deal. This is just price of doing business. You can show them in there full of stuff. So we probably have a dumpster full of stuff to get rid of. So we got the communal bathroom right here. Oh darn, that's full of stuff too. At least they put it in the, put it in the tub for daddy. Right? This is the primary bedroom. And we got the primary bathroom in here. Something's going on. Something's leaking. I might cut the water off at the street. Is this wet? Something is leaking through the bottom of the floor. Well, okay, I see. The toilet was leaking. Why did they unhook that? No, we'll deal with that. You got the bathroom? Mm -hmm. Get it good? <sighs> I haven't seen it since we got it the other day. So that shower is going to have to be redone. New vanity, new toilet. This bathroom will have to be redone too. It's just price of doing business. Any questions you got for daddy? Mm -hmm. We'll come back and do a short video. All right. So let's go back to the office and let's go over these numbers. Man, that thing smelled a little funny, right? Uh, it was all tied up in that water leak. I don't know what happened to the water. It wasn't leaking like that when I went to look at it three, uh, a month ago. So these things happen. They left a ton of stuff and I am the, going to be the sewer. We are nothing but sewers where people can dump on us. In exchange, we make a profit, right? And we're not mad at that. 
everybody wins. So if I'm pouring on you right now, or if I'm loving on you, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button. All right, and what the main thing we need to do for our community is share this stuff so people know how all this stuff is broken down. So let's get into the financing. We use something called a self-directed Roth IRA. Self-directed. Now, a lot of people, when they think of IRAs, they think of some dude in Wall Street that's got a suit and tie and he's going to work every day and he's managing their funds, assets under management, AUW, AUM, assets under management. But when you do self-directed investing, you are the asset manager. I am, I am your manager. Right? I am the one that has to manage the funds for myself. So self-directed means exactly what it says. You have to direct your IRA to buy and sell. So my IRA buys and sells real estate. It also buys and sells cryptocurrency. It buys and sells different stock and options. And it's all based on the decisions that I have made. You see, I just couldn't make my life work in the traditional way where somebody else was managing things for me. It just didn't work for me. And, and I'm not saying it won't work for you. However, when you do self-directed investing, I get to decide the money goes to this piece of property. Boom, there we made 20, 30 grand. And that's how I've been able to grow my IRA. Now, the only thing with the IRA is when the money goes out to buy the property, all the profit that comes back in has to go back into the IRA, so you can't necessarily spend it. But that's a whole nother training. I don't wanna to get too deep into that, but I want you to understand that if you have a self-directed Roth IRA, which is what we use, it can buy, so the IRA can buy the property, okay? So the ARV on this, this townhouse here was 260,000. This is a fix and flip. The purchase price was 165,000. Let me see if I can find the HUD somewhere around here. I'll show you. We'll go over the HUD together. Closing disclosure. The renovation is going to be about 35K. Hard costs, hard slash closing costs. Please pay, please pay attention here. Now, we got 6% realtor fees, generally speaking, right? So 6% of 260,000, I already did the numbers, is 15K. So off the top, whether you sell it, I sell it, this is a negotiating uh, tactic that we use when we go to talk to homeowners. You must build in 6% for somebody. Somebody's gonna end up selling this thing. So 15K, these are the costs, pay attention. Interest, taxes and insurance, utilities, and miscellaneous. Now. I know you say, Chris, I thought you bought it with your IRA. So interest, we don't necessarily have interest that we're paying out on this, but we have opportunity lost, loss of opportunity. So when I have 165,000 come out of an IRA, right? That means it's not, that, that means it's not in somewhere else working. So I have to make sure that it's working at its highest and best use here. You have to understand as you, as you grow capital and you start using and deploying wealth, you move money over here because you want the ROI to be the highest as possible. And safe. Obviously, I want to save first, but then the IRA comes. I mean, the ROI. So interest is still calculated in my head because once it's locked in here, that means it's not somewhere else earning money. Okay, so you have to remember that opportunity cost is the cost of using capital, even if you're not paying interest on it. So still keep that in your mind. And when you run over these numbers, round up, homies, I left interest in here because we still, generally speaking on every property, are going to have an expense of interest. All right, so the cost to sell, the hard cost to sell this thing is gonna be roughly 25K, right? So that's roughly 10% of the ARV. Taxes, insurance, that's still gonna be about two grand. Now, it, don't forget it costs us to buy the property and to sell the property. That's closing costs. Costs us like almost three grand just to buy and another grand at 1,500 just to sell it. I need y'all to understand that. People are want, trying to understand, Chris, why is it so high just to buy the property? These are just transaction costs. I need you to just get over it. It's going to cost. If you're going to be in the real estate business, you're going to pay some money. It costs money to fill these houses. So if we take our ARV, back out our purchase price, back out our renovations, back out our soft cost, cost to sell, our profit will end up being roughly 35,000 and that's plus or minus. Now, don't forget, we use something called a flat fee broker. So I'm able to chop this realtor fee down to 3%. 
because we don't necessarily pay a realtor to list our properties. Now, I do have some expenses of taking phone calls and some admin expenses for staff, but it's nowhere near 3%. So remember that when you're, that's why we're, we always use a flat fee broker. Now, if you're in wherever you're at, this is this, this, this little tip here has saved me hundreds of thousands, which is why you follow my channel. You want tips and strategies to grow your business. Flat fee brokers will save your life. Because what happens when you sell a property really with the agent? Usually, and no disrespect to my agents, my realtors, yes, realtor, not realtor, my realtors. Oh my gosh, it's realtor. Usually when a realtor lists a property, what do they do? They usually just put it on the MLS and let the buyers come and they do a little bit of paperwork. So what is the difference between me paying you right now to do it or you getting paid when the property sells? Well, you, they, take a extreme, they take an extreme discount when they just list it, put it on the MLS, we take all the phone calls, we do all the paperwork and they get paid really for almost doing nothing. So Google flat fee broker in your area, that just saves you how many hundreds of thousands of that tip, okay? So we're gonna make roughly, that's why I always put plus or minus. You, don't, you never know in real estate what you're gonna make. Could take six months to sell, to, could take six weeks to sell. You just have no idea, all right? So I hope this video has enriched you. Follow, like, but more, once again, ultimately, more importantly, please share this information. Share with our community so we can get the word out about how we're buying real estate, fixing it up, the market is still okay, real estate market will always be around. It's not going anywhere, so don't be scared. And if you are scared, team up with somebody that's already doing it, okay? And if you have a house you wanna sell in the Hampton Roads area, we are the Hampton Roads premier house buyers. And if you've got some capital that you wanna get working with us, just shoot me a direct message. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.